सो लेट अस बिगिन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर सो इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी रिपीटेडली यूज दिस रिजल्ट और रिमार्क we used the following result which i had left as an exercise but let's just see how to do this uh, so proper let's write it as a proposition the standard topology and product topology on rn are equal so what do i mean by product topology on rn so rn is equal to this product n times and we give each factor the standard topology and then we take the product topology so proof so recall that we had proved that if x is a topological space is a set with two topologies tau1 and tau2 bi is a basis for tau i then if b1 is contained in tau2 implies tau1 is contained in tau right so and this we had used this result to prove that topologies are equal so we will use this once again yeah so uh let tau1 denote the standard topology so uh right so a basis for tau1 is given by sets of the form s epsilon a comma well x here yeah. so here x is a point in rn so x is equal to x1 x2 to x n right and this set s epsilon x recall uh this was those points y in rn such that mod xi minus yi is less than epsilon but this set is precisely equal to the product of b epsilon xi yeah where b epsilon xi is this xi and this is the interval xi minus epsilon and xi plus epsilon right and uh each b epsilon xi is open in r and therefore this is an element of the basis for the product topology right so since belongs to b2 this is equal to the basis for the product topology right so this implies that this b1 which consists of these sets s epsilon is contained in b2 which is contained in tau right so this shows that tau1 is contained in tau 
Now similarly let us prove that tau 2 is contained in tau 1. So for that we will show that. So next we will show. that B2 is contained in tau 1. Right. So, what is the typical element of B2 look like? So, an element of B2 looks like product Ui i equal to 1 to n, right? where Ui's are open in R. Yeah. So, uh, let x be a point in this product u i yeah so then uh, right for each i there exists epsilon i such that this b epsilon i x i is completely contained in u i so we choose epsilon equal to minimum of all these i's among these epsilon i's. So, then this implies that b epsilon x i is contained in u i for all i, uh, which implies that product b epsilon x i is contained in this product of u i for all i. Right, but that implies that S epsilon x is contained in because this set is equal to this S epsilon x. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, therefore, what this shows is that. So, if n is equal to 2, right? So, this is my u1 and this is my u2, and we have taken any point and we have found the s epsilon around it, yeah. For each uh, x in u1 cross u2, there is an epsilon such that this uh, open square of side length 2 epsilon is completely contained inside u1 and u2, yeah. So, this implies that. So, taking union over all x. So, we get that uh, this product u i uh, is equal to this x and s epsilon x. <laughs> right. Uh, of course, the epsilon is depends on depends on x. Yeah, epsilon varies with x. Right? So, uh, this implies that. So, since we have this set product of ui's and in the standard we have we can write it as a union of basic open sets in the standard topology and arbitrary unions of open sets are open. So, this implies that this product of 1 to n is open in uh, the standard topology that is tau 1, right? because we have written it as a union of uh, open subsets in tau 1. Right? So, thus this shows that B 2 the basis is contained in tau 1 which implies that tau 2 is contained in tau 1. So, this shows that. So, this shows that the standard topology and the product topology on R n agree. Okay. So, this is a result which we had repeatedly used in the previous lecture. So, now let us continue. So, next we are going to uh, see an example. So, in this example we will uh, 
give a set theoretic description of a map and the exercise is to show that that map is continuous. Okay. So, in order to show that that map is continuous, we will use what we have learnt earlier. So, let us first describe the map set theoretically. So, let H contained in R n be the hyperplane. H is equal to x 1, x 2 up to x n minus 1 and the last coordinate is 0. Well, I can write as okay. right, points of this point, this type inside R n. Okay. And similarly, let H prime be the hyperplane. So, here the last coordinate, the first n minus 1 can be anything, but the last one we want is 1. Okay. So, let us we can make this both of these. H prime in red maybe. So, this is H prime. And this is H. And, uh, so, we are interested in considering R n minus H prime. So, we will define a map. So, we will define a map which we denote by phi from R n minus H prime to H. So, what is the description of this map? So, we take any point x in R n minus H prime and we take this point P this point P is 1. So, this point is P and this are x right. Now, we join x and P by a straight line okay. and we extend this straight line till it meets h. Yeah. So, um, this x okay. and so, so the description in words is let x be in, so let me just write this. So, let x be in R n minus h prime, join x and this fixed point P, which is defined to be 0, 1, uh, and let q in h be the point. where this line meets h. So, there will be a unique such point and so, we define the map as define phi of x to be equal to q. Okay. So, the claim we want to make is uh, let r n minus h prime and h have the subspace topology. From R n. Okay. 
so then phi is continuous okay. so before we prove the claim let's make a remark over here uh, the subspace to, it is it can be easily checked so note that h is isomorphic to rn H is the inclusion, image of the inclusion, I from Rn minus 1 to Rn, right. So, what is the map I? X1 up to Xn minus 1, it gets mapped to Xn, X1 up to Xn minus 1 comma 0, right. And uh, this map is an inclusion and the standard topology on Rn minus 1 agrees with the subspace topology from Rn. Yeah, and a similar remark. holds for h prime ok. So, having made this remark let us prove our claim. So, the idea is to first describe phi in terms of coordinates and then see that each of the coordinate function is continuous yeah. So, let us just ok. So, that is like the brief idea or the main point of the idea. So, let us see how to prove this claim. So, the image of H, uh, the image of phi lands in H and uh, H has a subspace topology. Uh, and so, so recall what we have proved. Uh, so, we have R n minus H prime. So, we can view phi as a map to R n, right. But the image lands inside H, this H and we have this inclusion. And since H is given the subspace topology, so to show that, uh, so this is actually, well, uh, this is phi and let us call this this I compose phi, right. So, to show that, so to show that phi is continuous, it is enough to show, it is enough to view phi as a map from R n minus H prime to R n and show that this map is continuous. Okay. So, we that is exactly what we are going to do now. So, we will now compute uh, a formula for this map in terms of coordinates. So, let us do that. Uh, so, we, we are going to make this map precise. So, let x x 1 up to x n be in R n minus H prime, right. Uh, every point in the line joining x and p is of the form x plus t times p minus x, yeah, where T is in R, right. So, that is clear because uh, we have our x and we have this direction p minus x or we can take x minus p. We have this direction, this is the direction of p minus x. So, all points on this line are given by moving along this direction for different values of t, 
right. So, a general point looks like uh, on this line has this has these coordinates uh, this is 1 minus x m which is equal to uh, 1 minus t into x 1 1 minus t into x n minus 1 and the last coordinate is uh, x n plus t into 1 minus x n that is right. So, this is a general point on this line has this expression. So, we are looking for the point which lies on h right. So, we have to set the last coordinate to be 0 yeah uh, this point is on h if and only if x n plus t times 1 minus x n is equal to 0 that is if and only if t is equal to x n upon x n minus 1 yeah and note that this is well defined. So, this t which we will denote by t naught is well defined is well defined since x n is not equal to 1 as x does not belong to h prime right. So, we have this t naught is equal to x n upon x n minus 1. So, let us uh, compute what is q going to be. So, q is going to be, so this implies that phi of x is equal to, so maybe I can write phi of x 1 to x n is equal to uh, 1 minus t into x 1. So, let us compute what is 1 minus t now. Is minus 1 upon x n minus 1, right. So, this is equal to minus x 1 upon x n minus 1 minus x 2 upon x n minus 1 x n minus 1 upon x n minus 1 and 0 yeah ok right. Uh, so, this means that so to show that so therefore to show that phi is continuous Uh, it is enough to show that each of the coordinate functions are continuous because R n now has the product yeah well the product topology on R n is the same is the same as the standard topology. So, it is enough to show suffices to show that phi i yeah phi i so, this is from R n minus h prime to R n and then projection onto the ith coordinate to R, but what is this? So, if um, x 1 up to x n it maps to minus x i upon x n minus 1 right. If i is is strictly less than n and x 1 up to x n maps to 0 if i is equal to n ok. Uh, so, we want to show that phi is continuous. So, phi is from r n minus h prime to r n right. So, here the standard topology is same as a product topology and therefore, uh, it is enough to show that this continuous when r n has the product topology. and to check that phi is continuous in the product topology, we just have to check that each of the coordinate functions is uh, continuous and that is exactly what we are going to do. Uh, 
right? So each of the coordinate functions is given by minus xi upon xn minus 1. So that is when i is less than 1, yeah. But now note that uh, minus xi, so yeah. So from rn minus h prime to r, we have these two functions minus xi. Uh, this is, so this is just the projection r into r, we have x, this is just the ith projection, this is minus of the ith projection, yeah. So, if, so this minus, minus x i upon x n minus 1, this is equal to the fun constant function minus 1 times the projection map times the map 1 upon x n minus 1, yeah. So, x n is a continuous function, x n minus 1 is a continuous function, on R n and X n minus 1 never vanishes on R n minus H prime. So, therefore, 1 upon X n minus 1 is a continuous function on R n minus H prime. Yeah? Therefore, all the product of all these is continuous. All these or uh, these three, these three are continuous on R n minus H prime. So, the last one is continuous because x n minus 1 never vanish, does not vanish as x n minus 1 does not vanish. Right? And so their product is continuous. So, uh, and of course, the last coordinate function is just the constant function and it is an easy check that the constant functions are continuous, right. So, this implies that, uh, so this implies that phi from r n minus h prime to r n is continuous and so also phi uh, from R n minus H prime to H is continuous. Okay, so this completes the proof. Proof of the claim. Right. So now notice that. Okay. So let's make some remarks. So remarks. So we could have written phi directly as phi from r n minus h prime to r n minus 1, right, as x 1 up to x n maps to minus x 1 upon x n minus 1 minus x n minus 1 upon x n minus 1, right. And this is clearly a continuous map due to the same reasons as above. And what we can do is, uh, we can restrict restrict this map to the uh, sphere minus point. So, let us just see what is happening. So, let us just copy this uh, diagram over here. it here. Okay. So, uh, when we make the sphere, the unit sphere, yeah. so the unit sphere meets h prime exactly at this point p. Okay. So, s n intersected with r n minus h prime is exactly S n minus this point P. This is an easy check which I will leave to you. So, then, so we have S n minus P is a subset of R n minus H prime and here we have this map phi to R n minus 1. Okay. So, uh, 
sorry I should write S n minus 1 is S n minus 1. So, uh, if we give S n the subspace topology or S n minus 1 the subspace topology, then this phi restricted to S n minus 1 minus this point P from S n minus 1 minus P to R n minus 1 is continuous. Right. Uh, because restriction of a continuous map to a subspace is continuous. Here note that for that to happen it is important that the subset is given the subspace topology. Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, so, here are some exercises. So, the first exercise is show that phi restricted to S n minus 1 minus this point P to R n minus 1 is a bijective map of sets. So, exercise 2 is uh, so let us psi from R n minus 1 to S n minus 1 minus p denote the inverse. So, a priori is just a set theoretic map. set theoretic inverse of this map. Okay. So, then show that psi is continuous. Okay. So, here is a hint to do this exercise. So, we have psi from R n minus 1 to S n minus 1 minus p. Right. Uh, S n this is included inside R n minus H prime and S n minus P has a subspace topology from R n minus H prime, which in turn has a subspace topology from R n. Right. So, therefore, to show that psi is continuous, it is enough to show that this composite is continuous. So, therefore, if you can compute the coordinates of this composite function and show that each coordinate is continuous, so thus enough to compute coordinate functions of this composite and show those are continuous. So, that is exercise 2 and that is also a hint uh, to this exercise and that sort of leads us to a definition. <coughs> Let f from x to y be a bijective continuous map. Right. Uh, let g denote its set theoretic inverse. Which exists since f is bijective right. So, if g is also continuous then show that I am sorry nothing to show uh, then f is called a homeomorphism.
so uh, okay uh, and i'd like to give one more exercise which is very easy right let f from x to y be a bijective continuous map uh, show that f is a homeomorphism if and only if for every u open in x f of u is open in y that's part a of the exercise and part b of the exercise is if f is a homeomorphism uh, then show that its inverse g is also homeomorphism So, we will end here.